I'm very excited to say it's now time to meet our first speaker. Always an individual with a vivid imagination, to start this month's Nicer Tuesdays to be stepping into the immersive illustrations of Lulu Zhao. Now, Lulu actually first studied science and architecture before following the urge to pursue a career in creative storytelling. Switching then to study illustration at university, Lulu has gone on to create her own digital world to escape to, which she'll be telling us more about today. So, hi Lulu, are you there? Could you pop on your mic? Yeah, hi. Hi, I'm here. Thank you Love so it. much for the introduction. And I'm really shocked that you know I studied science <laughs> and architecture before illustration. <laughs> Yeah, of course. Well, thank you so much. And yeah, welcome to Nicer Tuesdays Online. I'm so excited to see this talk of yours. So I'm going to disappear now and it's over to you. Um, I'll be back in about 10 minutes. And yeah, just mm -hmm. remember everyone, if you've got any questions for Lulu, do pop them in the chat so I can ask them in a bit. All right. Cool. Thank you so much. So here we go. I'll be talking a bit about why I'm using an alter ego and what Miss Fuckit and the Fuckit verse is all about. So let us get a visual of this. Uh, it's a website, not a presentation, so I'll be fiddling around a bit with uh, little windows. So I work digitally with Blender 3D to create all my pieces. And with being in that 3D digital space, I feel that I can immerse myself on a level that nothing else has ever done before. Certain boundaries dissolve, making it possible for me to express myself or like my true inner self. Like some people like to spew hate on Facebook and like article comments. Well, I have maybe a little bit more of a positive approach to that, so. <laughs> But thanks to that, I'm able to analyze in a very therapeutic way um, how growing up and still existing right now in a predominantly white environment and also how the lack of representation and positive identification has affected the development of my identity as a mixed African or Afro-Belgian woman. So let's take a little look what that research uh, looks like in a visual expressive way. Um, all right, let's open this up. So first I'd like to talk about a um, project I did for Adult Swim. I got to make a couple of social items where I got to introduce Miss Fuckit through their platform. And one of these pieces I'm showing here right now, it's titled Music Box, super creative as I tend to be. Um, <laughs> but so I didn't have a music box personally, but it was around me. A lot of friends did, and it was also very popular uh, in cartoons, movies, fairy tales, whatever. But most of these boxes featured a ballerina inside, as most of you know. Um, but that little ballerina mostly was a little white skinny blonde girl. So a perfect default for young kids to aspire to be. Uh, but besides that, it's pretty weird to look at it from a different perspective. So just to think about that this little girl or this little puppet is trapped in a box, twirling on a lullaby at other people's whim where her only purpose seems to be as to serve as a um, voyeuristic object and have a total loss of control. So that's what this piece is trying to take a look at. So let's play a little animation. just mute it over here. So, um, yeah, the difference here is that, well, with the capacity of conveying a message within 15 seconds or so, um, was for Miss Fuckett to not be this powerless being or object for uh, others' creepy entertainment needs, 
but to have that box as an extension of herself and through that have the opportunity uh, to reclaim her power. And a very important detail, she has a shit, a shit ton of coins as well. So that's another thing that we do want to emphasize. But so it's my world is fairly very pink and very bubbly, very hyper feminine. Um, but even with that cuteness, um, so we have all these elements that are supposed to be cute and bubbly, but even within this context, we get this like off feeling, which is something that I try to incorporate more to have it being in a critique or seen as a critique of that. But sometimes we do just want things to be cute and we have a need of a more naive tone where the cuteness is used in a more accessible form. So to give a sense of relief and to have a soothing feeling or just a little escape. And an example of that is where I introduced or I created Bebe Fuck It. So B-E-B-E, -E, not baby but baby fuck it is like still full of hope um she is pure joyous a calmness excitement but she doesn't realize yet how fucked the world is so she doesn't have that need to constantly be fighting or or that urge to be a little bit activist in sort of way and this one was for time magazine and i also use this version of the character for Choices magazine. So it's more of an approachable sense in a way, but even in my other pieces where there's more of a critique within them, I do really use or abuse the cuteness to lure people in. And then sometimes I'll add in some leftist propaganda. <laughs> but so, in another way, so as I mentioned that Miss Fockett, she's like trying to find her confidence and her um, within her sexuality, within mental health or just her identity as belonging to African diaspora in general. It did was a perfect fit to work together uh, with the team, again, with Adult Swim for the show Tuka and Burti for the second season, because there in that show, they also um yeah talk about all of these topics that i try to incorporate within the fuck it first so let's take a look at the ident i made to promote the second season So yeah, what I love about 3D mostly is that immersive sense that you can create, not only during like the creative process, because I approach it in a way like it's a video game, like the Sims or these games I used to play on this random website where you got to decorate a fairy glitter room or whatever. Um, so in that way, I'm fully immersed into that experience, but also in the final piece, that 3D element, it just makes everything a little bit more graspable, if that makes any sense. And so it was amazing to also be able to have um, a little cameo within the 2D universe of Tukan Berti. It's booming though. And here as well. Or Spurdy, oh God, that's an ugly baby, Birdie. We're gonna have an ugly baby? No, I don't want an ugly baby. Oh. So yeah, I love that it doesn't always have to be within that 3D space alone, but it can be emerged within these other realities and it connects each other very well. So yeah, here again, I just wanted to show the little sex bugs that were so <laughs> present in the first season, but also in the second season, and just their um, 
their hypersexuality and their confidence is just something that I really wanted to incorporate and thought that would fit perfect with the fuck it first. And then lastly, I'd love to show um, something that I did for It's Nice Dance. <laughs> How convenient. Uh, but it talks a bit on the, um, the gap that is, or the, um, how a digital space or the digital reality can influence a physical reality and vice versa, which is we've been living online for so long now. We're, we see our faces on these little screens. We have filters, but when they glitch, our noses are not that cute anymore. So all perfect fuel for struggles like body dysmorphia. So that was something, a message I wouldn't I wanted to have Miss Fockett um, bring about within, um, yeah, the weekly comic for It's Nice That. So let's just open some of them up. It's without sound, so you can just read through them a little bit. But so, yeah, I hope this was a little nice introduction to Miss Fockett and the Fockett verse. I think my 10 minutes are up, no? <laughs> I can still talk <laughs> if you want me to. Hi, Lulu. Hi, Lulu. No, that was amazing. Hi. Thank you so much. That was amazing. Loved. That's such a brilliant way to do the presentation as well. Yeah. See all those different parts of your work. But before you go, I think we've got about, yeah, five minutes to ask you a couple of questions. So, yeah, everyone in the audience, if you do have a question for Lulu, pop it in the chat and I'll do my best to ask it for you. But um, one of the first, first things I wanted to ask you was kind of around the world that you managed to create in your work. I mean, it's such a skill both from your imagination but also your insane like technical abilities as well and I was wondering if you could maybe offer some insight into programs or tutorials that you found were particularly helpful for you when you were developing this journey I suppose. Yeah so I do have to say that now I work together with my husband especially for animation it's such a collaborative experience that doing it all on your own is would be insane even that we're doing it with the two of us sometimes is a bit much but that's where we're at right now but I did work for a whole year by myself and uh, just then I just had to add someone on but yeah so I mentioned that I work with Blender 3D and I work with Blender exclusively. So everything is done within Blender. And to get to know, I think I'm using the program now for two and a half, three years where I first opened it. And it seems quite scary at first, but if you just can have some discipline and just you know go through tutorials, you can definitely get a hang of it because you can do so much within the program and you just have to find the right modifiers and tools that work for your own style or what you're trying to do. And I learned everything from YouTube. So <laughs> I, yeah, I started out like so many people and it's maybe a little bit hated within the Blender community by now, but, but with the donut tutorial from Blender Guru and it's, yeah, it's, I don't know, a 10, 15 part where every um, YouTube video is like an hour or so. But it's mm. so great because when creating that stupid donut, you get to learn so many tools and in-depth learn what exactly they do, why they're doing it like that. So I can recommend that for sure. <laughs> Oh, that's so good. That's so helpful. Um, thank you for that. And yeah, we've had a couple of questions in from the audience. Um, the first one being, how did you find your gorgeous aesthetic and what choices did you make to get there? Okay, so uh, there is a very wild conceptualization behind it because I need it for myself to yeah just make sense. But in December of 2019, like January 2020, I was still crying behind my computer because I thought that everything I made was shit and I didn't have a style and I just, I was so lost. But then I just wrote down a couple of rules to start off this fuck it verse um, space. And that was 
because it all yeah comes back to my inner child and creating that safe space that I maybe didn't have to form this healthy identity within being mixed. So I wanted to start out with a plastic toy world. So everything that exists there, you could think of as being Barbie dolls or the Polly Pocket stuff, My mm -hmm. Little Pony. So all of that is behind the aesthetic that I create. So 90s, early 2000s um, toys. Yeah. And Bratz. Bratz is also a very big inspiration. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. And that advice of making rules, I think, is a, would be so good if you're struggling to know where to start. That's great. Um, yeah. Another question we had from Sandra this time um, is around how did you land your first clients? You've touched on a few there, but you've, you've had some amazing clients since you graduated, like Adult Swim and MTV. Yeah. So uh, my first client I had in 2020, actually, it's a bit insane to think about it, <laughs> but it was about in March 2020 and it was for Dropbox. That was my first client. And I got it because um, the Australian agent, Jackie Winter, I guess, they created um, a Slack community and I entered that Slack community and then there was like this area where you could introduce yourself and your work and that's what I did and somebody working at Dropbox saw my work and that's how I landed that first job. And then I didn't get anything for about two months so I was like yeah it was just a fluke, uh, it's never gonna happen again. Uh, but then yeah it's a bit unfortunate to talk about but it yeah it's very important that it like sh yeah shoot it off with um black lives matter and everything happening around that so from june 2020 i've been working constantly so because a lot of companies were aware that maybe they're lacking some diversity with the people that they're working with and then it forced them to look further than their small pool that they're maybe used to working with so that's how I got to know more people and work with the, yeah, with these brands. So, yeah. Great. Yeah. It's amazing also to hear about, yeah, things like those Slack communities and so many things like that have popped up during the pandemic and just, yeah, new ways to find people. It's amazing. Um, yeah. I'm afraid. And also, I'm so, oh, we're, it's all no, 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 you go. You go. Oh, no, and also I have to mention, I cannot not mention it, is that a lot of the contacts that I have or jobs that I have is also thanks to Julian Glander. He's such a supportive person and his work is amazing as well. But him as a person is as amazing as his work. And yeah, I mean, he's the best. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. Oh, well, thank you so much, Lulu. Um, yeah, I'm really sorry that's all we have time for, but thank you so much for joining us. And yeah, I'm sure people will yeah, be excited to see what you make next. But yeah, thanks again. Thanks for having Bye. me. Bye. <laughs>